15 simple principles of teaching and learning that every teacher should know. Introduction, hello and welcome to this video on 15 principles of teaching and learning. Whether you are a teacher, a student, or a lifelong learner, understanding these principles can help you to enhance your learning and improve your teaching. So, let's dive in. 1. Prior Knowledge Activation The first principle is Prior Knowledge Activation. This means building on what learners already know to facilitate the acquisition of new knowledge or skills. As the psychologist David Ozubel said, the most important single factor influencing learning is what the learner already knows. 2. Interest and motivation. The second principle is interest and motivation. Creating a positive and engaging learning environment that fosters learners' interest and intrinsic motivation can significantly enhance learning outcomes. As the psychologists Edward Desi and Richard Ryan said, the more self-determined a person's motivation is, the better the person will be in terms of performance and well-being. 3. Feedback and reinforcement. The third principle is feedback and reinforcement. Providing timely and constructive feedback and reinforcement can enhance learners' performance and motivation. As the behaviorist B.F. Skinner said, the consequences of behavior determine the probability of its occurrence again. 4. Collaborative learning. The fourth principle is collaborative learning. Encouraging learners to work together in groups to achieve common goals can promote social interaction and knowledge construction. As the psychologist Lev Vygotsky said, learning is a social process. 5. Inquiry-based learning. The fifth principle is inquiry-based learning. Encouraging learners to ask questions, investigate problems, and explore new ideas in order to construct their own knowledge can foster critical thinking and creativity. As the philosopher John Dewey said, education is not preparation for life, education is life itself. 6. Scaffolding. The sixth principle is scaffolding. Providing learners with appropriate support and guidance to help them achieve their learning goals, and gradually reducing this support as they become more independent, can enhance learning and promote self-regulated learning. As the psychologists Jerome Bruner, Wood, and Ross said, we begin with the hypothesis that any subject can be taught effectively in some intellectually honest form to any child at any stage of development. 7. Differentiated Instruction The seventh principle is differentiated instruction. Adapting instruction to meet the diverse learning needs and preferences of individual learners can improve learning outcomes and foster inclusive education. As the educator Carol Tomlinson said, differentiation is not a strategy. It's not an approach. It's not a program. It's a way of thinking about teaching and learning. 8. Active engagement. The eighth principle is active engagement. Encouraging learners to actively participate in the learning process through activities such as discussion, problem solving, and project-based learning can enhance learning outcomes and promote deeper learning. As the educators Robert Bonwell and James Eisen said, active learning engages students in two aspects, doing things and thinking about the things they are doing. 9. Contextual learning. The ninth principle is contextual learning. Helping learners to connect new knowledge or skills with their existing knowledge and experiences, and to apply what they have learned in real-world contexts can enhance learning and promote transfer. As the anthropologists Jean Lave and Etienne Wenger said, learning is a process of becoming a full participant in a community of practice. 10. Reflective practice. The tenth principle is reflective practice. Encouraging learners to reflect on their learning experiences and use this reflection to improve their future learning and performance can enhance metacognition and self-regulated learning. As the philosopher Donald Sean said, reflection in action is a process by which professionals use their own practice experiences to generate. 11. Authentic assessment. The 11th principle is authentic assessment. Using assessment methods that are closely aligned with real-world tasks and contexts can enhance the authenticity and relevance of the learning experience, and provide learners with meaningful feedback on their learning. As the educator Grant Wiggins said, assessment is not a spreadsheet. It's a conversation. 12. Mastery learning. The 12th principle is mastery learning. Providing learners with opportunities to master the content or skills before moving on to more advanced topics can enhance learning outcomes and promote mastery orientation. As the educator Benjamin Bloom said, learning is not a spectator sport. 13. Metacognitive Strategies The 13th principle is metacognitive strategies. Helping learners to develop their metacognitive skills, such as planning, monitoring, and evaluating their own learning, can enhance their self-regulated learning and problem-solving abilities. 
As the psychologist John Flavel said, metacognition refers to one's knowledge concerning one's own cognitive processes or anything related to them. 14. Cognitive load theory. The 14th principle is cognitive load theory. Minimizing extraneous cognitive load, maximizing germane cognitive load, and optimizing the use of working memory can enhance learning outcomes and reduce cognitive overload. As the cognitive scientists John Sweller, Paul Ayers, and Slava Kaluga said, cognitive load theory is based on our knowledge of human cognitive architecture, and is concerned with how information is processed by the mind. 15. Active Processing. The 15th principle is active processing. Encouraging learners to actively process the information they receive, such as by elaborating, summarizing, and organizing it, can enhance their understanding and retention of the material. As the cognitive psychologist Richard Mayer said, learning is an active process. Kindly like, comment,